Hey guys, welcome again. At this point, we have an almost functional application in our hands, but there are some changes we can do to make it even better. First, let's take a look at our catalog controller. We're using the HTTP service here to retrieve the JSON file that contains the movie list. But truth being told, we shouldn't be doing any HTTP requests inside of the controller. The controller is meant to manipulate our data and prepare it to be used in the template, but it's not a good practice to handle the HTTP API calls directly into the controller. A better way to organize that would be to use a service to contain this data retrieval logic and abstract it away from the controller. In this case, where we're using a single and very simple HTTP call to get our data, this may look superfluous. But in a large-scale application with complex API services and multiple models, putting all this logic inside of the controller will make it a mess. Up until this point, we have been using several different services. The scope service, the HTTP and the filter services, the route parameters, and so on. Now, it's time to learn how to write and use our own services. Let's start by creating a service to abstract the HTTP calls away from our controllers. First, let's open up the components folder again and create a new directory called movie. Inside of the movie directory, let's create a file named movie-service.js to contain our service. Inside of that file, let's create a new module called movie-db dot movie dash service and let's register a factor in it. Let's call it movie API service. By this point, you should be familiar with creating and managing modules already. So let's go back to our index, import our module, and then go to our app JS and inject our module. Then we can go back to services.js and start coding it. We're first going to include the HTTP service as a dependency of our custom service. Then, let's create a new variable called movieAPI and let's add a new method to it called getMovies. The getMovies will simply return the HTTP.getJSONMovies.json and then the service is going to return the movieAPI. Now, we can go back to our catalog controller we can remove the HTTP service from the dependencies and replace it with the movie API service. Then, instead of using HTTP requests, let's use the movie API service dot get movies method. And it's done. The API logic was now moved to the service. Now you can go to your movie.js and do the exact same thing. Place it here and here. And then you can go back to your browser, test it, and it's still working. Now there is one last piece of functionality I want to add to this app. Let's make a list by genre. Remember the genres.json file we put in the JSON folder in the beginning? That file contains a list of all the movie genres that are used in the movie list. Each genre has an ID, a name, and a total that represents the total number of movies in the movie list that belongs to the genre. To retrieve this data, let's go back into our movieService.js and let's add a new method to movie API called getGenres. And it works just like the getMovies, but instead of the movies, it will get the genres file. Now, go to the catalog controller on catalog.js and let's add a new variable here that will get the general list for us. Let's use the movie API service again and the getGenres method we just created. And the rest will be just like the getMovies one, except we're gonna call the variable generalist. Now let's go to the catalog.html file and let's add something new. Go to the bottom, let's add a new div, call sm2, so it only occupies two columns of the 12. And inside of that, let's add a title Class it section title, genre title, by genre. And to contain the general list, let's create a bootstrap element called the list group. This list group will contain a first initial link that will have href pointing to hash and it will be a list group item. And that says all. And it has a badge containing 
movielist.length. You're gonna understand what is this is about in a minute. After that, the important part. Let's create another link. Let's class it list group item again. And this will be our ng repeat element. And we're gonna add one of these for each genre in the general list. And each item will contain the genre name and a badge containing the total number of movies in that genre. Let's make just one little CSS adjustment in our app.css. Let's add a genre title class and align it on the right and add some margin to the bottom. Now you can go to your browser, go back to your catalog, reload it and boom, generalist. But this generalist doesn't do anything yet. So let's work on that. So now let's go back into our app and let's create a new controller. Let's first add a new directory called generous that will contain the files of our generous screen. And inside of it, let's create a new file called genra.js. And let's copy paste the content of catalog.js to it and make a few adjustments. The reason I copy pasted the controller is because we're gonna use the same template again. So many of those elements will just stay here. Let's change the module name to genra. Let's change the controller name to genra controller. And let's add a few services to the dependence list. Let's add the route params and the filter services. Now let's go back to our app.js and let's add a new route. Let's say that when the route is equal to genre slash genre name, that is a parameter, then the template URL will be catalog slash catalog.html, the same one you have used before, and the controller will be the genre controller. Then let's import the genre module into the app. Now the controller will get the genre name parameter from the route. Let's go back to the controller and make some more changes. Let's create a scope variable called genre name. Let's use the route params again to retrieve the parameter value from the route. Now, when the user goes to generous slash genre name, the controller knows which genre he wants to visualize. So to get the movies that belong to that genre, you only need to do a little extra filtering in the movie list variable. Instead of just returning the data, let's use the filter service to filter out only the movies we want to show. Add filter of the filter kind, pass the data array, and let's define a function that will be our filtering method. Let's pass the movie as a parameter, and what that will do is that the filter service will repeat that method for each item in the list, and either remove it or not from the list depending if the result of that function is true or false. And as the return value here, let's use another filter. Let's filter the list of genres of a given movie, and let's see if we can find any genre on the list that matches the one provided on the route. If the array returns any element, the function will return true, and the movie will be shown on the page. Now that our controller is done, don't forget that we have to go back to index.html and import it. Now, we only need to link the genre buttons to our new controller. Go back to catalog.html, go to the bottom, and on the href add hash genre slash genre name. And it's basically done. Go back to your browser, reload the page, click a genre, and you're gonna go to a page that only contains the movies of that said genre. But it's not very clear right now which genre are we looking at, unless you look at the route. So let's add some elements to the page. Let's go back to our genre controller and let's add a new scope variable called page title. And let's assign genre name plus movies to it. Now go back to catalog.html and near the top where we used to have most watched this week, let's just make it page title. But don't forget, this is the same view we use in the catalog controller. So let's go to the catalog controller and let's also add a page title. And there we're gonna assign most watched this week. Now when you go back to the browser, it's almost good. But it could be better if you could highlight in the list the genre that is currently active. So let's go back to catalog.html near the bottom and let's add a new ng class and let's add the class active 
in case the general name matches the general name passed as a parameter to the route. Now go back to the browser and check it out. It works. And so does the pagination. Now we can consider the exercise completed. I hope it helped you to better understand the mechanics of AngularJS for routing, dealing with data, and multiple partial views. In the next section, we're going to go back to the beginning and review the AngularJS most important directives. We will revisit the ones we already used alongside the ones we haven't seen yet. Then, we're going to learn how to create our own custom directives. See you there.